Okay, we need to talk about how to do calculations involving weak acids. And one of the first things to point out is that when you're dealing with weak acids, this question is not straightforward. If this was a strong acid, strong acids, unlike weak acids, dissociate, dissociate completely. So the answer to this question, what's the concentration of hydrogen for a strong acid, would be the same as the concentration of the acids. The answer would be 2.45 if this was a strong acid. But being a weak acid, the answer is not 2.45 molar. So what we need to do because this is a weak acid is go through a series of calculations involving an equilibrium constant. So here we go. One of the first things to understand is that like any acid, this is just general acid, hydrogen attached to an anion of some kind. In this case, the anion is, is fluorine. Um, it will dissociate to make hydrogen ion plus whatever anion is left over. All the acids will do the same. So let's create what's called an ice table which is initial concentration changing concentration and then equilibrium aka final concentration for all things involved and my lines are less than 100 percent straight but i suppose one gets the idea and what we're going to do is we need to deal with the original acid the hydrogen ion released by that original acid and the leftover anion released by that acid. So what we're looking at is a, is a situation where the initial concentration at the beginning is you just start by putting the acid in the water. So the initial concentration of the acid is 2.45 moles per liter and at the beginning there's going to be it, none of it will have dissociated yet. This is before dissociation. When it dissociates, some amount, not directly told you by the question, will dissociate. We're going to call that X. So for every amount, every molecule that dissociates, we're going to say that's X. That's going. This represents the amount that dissociates. Every molecule that dissociates is one of these that no longer is. So for every one of these that dissociates, you get one hydrogen and one anion. So for every one of these that dissociates, you get one of these and one of these. Thus, at equilibrium your final concentrations are going to be 2.45 minus x. Your hydrogen concentration is some unknown value of x, and the whatever the concentration of anion is, it's the same. I mean, look at this balanced equation. If it releases one hydrogen ion, then it's also going to release one anion, and so the concentration of anion and hydrogen ion will be the same. So let's look at that in terms of an equilibrium expression. Remember, for equilibrium expressions, k equals products or rather concentration of products over the concentration of oops reactants reactants like so um, in this case what we're looking at that meaning is concentration of hydrogen ion times concentration of anion divided by concentration of the acid and oops I just put the wrong thing there we go HA so let's plug the numbers in K equals, uh, let's see, what's the hydrogen ion concentration? Some unknown number X. So there's your hydrogen ion concentration. Whatever the hydrogen ion concentration is, the anion concentration is the same. This is this, this is this. On the bottom, the concentration of the acid started at 2.45 moles per liter and then decreased by some amount X. I'm going to take this a step further by plugging in the dissociation constant, which is provided in a table that looks like this one. And for hydrofluoric acid, it is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth equals the hydrogen ion concentration times the anion concentration divided by the concentration of the acid, 2.45 minus x in this particular case. Okay, so let's combine things and, and, and kind of make things a little simpler. Weak acids, we assume that they dissociate very little. Oftentimes it's usually just one molecule out of a thousand will dissociate. So we're going to say this number is tiny compared to whatever this number is, in this case 2.45. Therefore, so you ignore it. 
Therefore, that allows us to make an approximation, which is kind of a lie. And yes, I am what I'm about to show you is a lie, but it's a little white lie that is close enough that it gets the job done. Little white lie. My little white lie is that this x is so small compared to this number that it doesn't even matter. So I'm just going to say 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth, I'm just bringing this number over here, is equal to concentration of x times concentration of x again. And then on the bottom, I'm just going to call it 2.45. That's my little white lie right there. This is a lie, but it's close enough that if, eh, fine, it'll give us a answer that doesn't really change the results. The results, if you include the sex, won't, won't alter very much. The, why do we bother doing this? Because it makes the calculation easier. Little white lie makes the calculation easier. Okay, so now it's just a matter of solving for x. After all, if you have x times x, that is x squared over 2.45. So I'm going to times both sides by 2.45. Let's see. So actually, in order to, I should make this a little clearer what's going on here. 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth equals x squared over 2.45. We're not paying. We'll deal with the units at the end. Um, so given this right here. We just multiply both sides by 2.45, so times 2.45, so these can cancel, and times 2.45 on this side also. Now we've got 2.45 times 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth equals x squared. By taking the square root of each side, we can get x by itself. So the square root of 2.45 times 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth is equal to x. And again, why am I solving for x? Let's just do a quick review. Why am I doing this? Because x is the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Some amount x was released during the ionization, or during the, um, I wanna say ionization, uh, dissociation is the word I'm looking for. Some amount x was released that's the amount, and so I'm solving for it to find out what hydrogen ion concentration is. This is hydrogen ion concentration right here. So we do the math, and it comes out to what the raw calculator output is 0 0.04021939 equals x, and there's probably more. That's just what the calculator could fit on its screen. So let's write this properly now. Hydrogen ion concentration is equal to x. So x equals the hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to this number, so we'll convert that to scientific notation, 4.0, oh wait, how far do we go? Keep in mind, the number provided in the data table only had two significant figures here, the acid dissociation constant, only two sig figs. The other numbers had more than two sig figs, but because of that two sig figs in the dissociation constant, which was the 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth, the answer can't have more than two sig figs, so we'll just let 4.0. That's going to be it. Now, I can't forget the units of concentration, which is molarity, or you could also write moles per liter, have it mean the same thing, and that's our answer right there. Hydrogen ion concentration is 4.0. Oops, I've had totally brain fart there. 4.0 times 10, oops, 1, 2, to the negative second moles per liter. All right, I want to be careful not to accidentally leave out this, but that, there's a huge difference between 4 and 4 times 10 to the negative second. So this we are right here would be the correct answer that we're looking for when it comes to calculating the hydrogen ion concentration um, of a weak acid.